Yeah, so it's great to see all of you here today. Um, my name is Rolf Versus, and I'm a co-founder of uh, the Horizon Cryptocurrency Project. I've got a presentation that talks a little bit about money and Bitcoin and Horizon. And uh, I'm glad that you have those nice notebooks today because I've got some uh, uh, recommendations on notes for you to take. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And uh, y'all can see what we got going. Okay, can you see my screen? All right. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so uh, let's talk about cryptocurrency and how it's different than a lot of other things. And one of the reasons I enjoy doing this presentation uh, is to let people know about um, how cryptocurrency is the future of money. In a lot of cases, new things are invented, but they're not shared all over the world. And so I want to do my part to share this information with you. Uh, what, one of the first places that I want you to do to follow up, because I don't want you to just trust me, I want you to go find out and learn about this information for yourself. So one of the best places to start is to look at the actual Bitcoin white paper at the Nakamoto Institute.org. And this was written a little, published a little bit over 10 years ago. And um, actually Bitcoin will have been in operation for 10 years uh, on January 3rd, 2019. So it's been around for uh, uh, quite a bit. Now, one of the things that I wanted to give you an example of was uh, how the future is unevenly distributed. You can get a full world-class education for free with just an internet connection. So, for example, my son, he's 16 years old. I teach him math and science using Khan Academy, some of the best high school uh, coursework in, in the world uh, there. He does most of it on his own, but I help him with it. Uh, Duolingo, uh, my daughter's in college and she wants to take a language that they don't offer there. So she's learning Dutch using Duolingo and they're gonna give her credit for that. You can learn any, uh, uh, any language uh, through Duolingo. For advanced coursework like MIT and Harvard, two of the uh, best universities here in America, they put most of their lectures and coursework on the internet for free. So um, you, know, you, you can get a world-class education without having to go to, to college, or if you have to, for example, work uh, to bring money for your family, you can still get uh, the education that other people get. Now, me, I've got a few different things for uh, experience. Um, got my engineer, first off. Uh, I got my electrical engineer, nuclear engineer, and data networking. I've done a few different things. and uh, That's me on a submarine uh, when I was in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, I was an officer, officer in the Navy on a a nuclear submarine and spent four years doing that. Also started a business in the information technology industry. And then uh, when I was done with that, we sold our business uh, about three, a little over three years ago. I uh, started doing cryptocurrency mining. So we've got a facility for doing that. And then I helped start Horizon, uh, which was called Zen Cash at the time. We changed the name to Horizon. And I'm wearing a t-shirt that says Zen because that's what we, uh, what we use for our token for our currency. And I'll tell you a little bit about that later. So first off, I want to make sure we're all on the same page about talking about you know, currency and money and wealth. And a lot of people use those words interchangeably, but they mean different things. So currency is uh, like the, the Naira that you use for payments. It can be divided into different amounts like a one and 10 and 50. Uh, everybody recognizes uh, the bills and uh, you can use it pretty much anywhere. Money is just like currency, but it keeps its value. So gold has traditionally been used by people as money for many years. And one of the reasons that gold keeps its value is the amount of new gold that's produced every year compared to the amount of gold that's out of the ground uh, is about 1% to 2%. So you can see a graph of the inflation rate over here on the right, um, less than 2%. So that's why gold maintains its value. Now, it's not as easy to uh, maybe carry around and use as paper money uh, or to, to use online, but then wealth is a completely different thing. Wealth is an abundance of assets. So currency and money are used to transfer wealth from one place to another, um, but it's the things that you own or the land that you have or your the, th the track record of success that you have in your life and your contacts um, and the things that you know. So in many cases, people go to university and they exchange um, currency 
for an education. So that's a, a wealth transfer from one place to another. So I use the US dollar. A lot of people in the world use the US dollar, especially if they are involved in buying oil or anything like that. But it was created by the government. And you can see here on the right, it's lost 97% of its value in the last 100, 100 years. So it is not money. It, it, it is not a store of value. It's not backed by gold. Nobody's money is backed by gold anymore. Um, and the government can create new dollars whenever they want. It's very difficult to use regular bank and government issued money. It's slow, it's expensive, and you need permission from a bank to get a bank account. Whenever I get, it's pretty easy for me to open a bank account here in the United States, but whenever I go open bank accounts in other countries, it's difficult, it's a process. I basically have to uh, prove to the banker that I'm a good person, and then they give me permission to deposit money in the bank. And when I deposit money in the bank, they own the money. It's not mine anymore. I can ask for it back and hopefully they'd give it to me. It's a very strange system. Um, and certainly that Naira is a currency, it's not money. It loses value every year. So compared to the inflation rate of gold, which is between 1.5 and 2 percent, uh, it bounces, the inflation rate of the Naira bounces between 5 and 20 percent. So if you have the, these types of bills, you're losing value every year. That's why a lot of people don't hold a lot of actual currency. They try to convert their currency into other things that maintain its store of value uh, into wealth. So what is Bitcoin? So there's a, there's a couple of good places to go to learn about Bitcoin. Well, there's a lot of good places to, to go to learn about Bitcoin. One of the basic one that has some good introductory videos is at weusecoins.com. Uh, I just finished reading The Bitcoin Standard, which is a, a really good book that talks about the history of money and how Bitcoin fits into that. Uh, I'd certainly recommend that. And Bitcoin is money. So anybody can use it is one of the really nice things. You do not need permission to use cryptocurrencies. You don't need anybody's permission to use Bitcoin. You download the app and you get Bitcoin from somewhere through a Bitcoin ATM or an exchange or have someone pay you in Bitcoin and you're often using it. You don't need permission to, to use cryptocurrencies. That's a huge difference. It's like gold. If you get gold, you, you can use it. You don't need anybody's permission to use gold. Uh, you don't have to actually trust people that, that, like a banker or a government, to make it work. There is a certain amount of Bitcoin that's gonna be issued over time. You can see over here on the right, there's the Bitcoin emission curve. There's only gonna be 21 million Bitcoin ever issued. And when it first started, uh, almost 10 years ago, it was being created rapidly. Uh, but then every four years, the amount, the rate at which Bitcoin is created is reduced. So right now we're in 20, almost 2019. So the Bitcoin um, inflation rate is below 10%. And then here in about a year and a half, it'll drop down to about 2% inflation rate. So similar to gold. And then you'll see the inflation rate is programmed to go down uh, more after that. So one of the nice things about Bitcoin is if you send and receive funds with Bitcoin, all the information is shared and stored on about 10,000 different computer servers around the world. So anybody can verify that, that the, those transactions happened. So it's not like the information is stored inside the, the bank's database or the government's database. That's one of the big innovations about Bitcoin is if you use it and you uh, have a, an address, it's not your name, if you have an address, you send or receive it, it's everybody around the world recognizes it. So you can use Bitcoin around the world. You can go, you can have your funds your wealth in Bitcoin, it can be divided down to very small numbers. You don't have to just get one Bitcoin. And then you can go anywhere in the world and you convert it to the local currency and then you're uh, off and running, you're spending. Um, so it's got all the attributes of money. Um, now, the price that you pay for a certain amount of Bitcoin changes over time, uh, just like supply and demand for different uh, things change. But over the last 10 years, it has increased in value as more and more people realize uh, that it works and that, that it can be used as money. Now, Bitcoin is based on a technology. Uh, it's called distributed ledger, also called blockchain. And there's a lot of other applications other than money. Money is just one of the first applications of this type of uh, public blockchain technology because um, 
money is one of the most inefficient things out there. But uh, there's other things that blockchain can be used for. In a lot of cases, uh, you look for a situation where many different participants participate in an activity, and it has to have somebody right now that's trusted, like a government or a bank or things like that. And there are people working on applications for a blockchain to be able to um, have the same attributes that Bitcoin has for money for other things like ownership of land or ownerships of car or who, who you are. One of the great books to read on how, I mean, capitalism works really well when it works. And uh, Hernando de Soto is an economist that went to five different countries with his team and discovered uh, and tried to figure out why capitalism works in some countries and why it doesn't. In a lot of cases, it's very difficult for people to actually take the capital that they have. Say you own a uh, your family owns a house or farm or things like that, but it's not fully registered with the government or your business isn't fully registered with the government. All the neighbors know that you own it and it's been in your family for, you know, 50, 100 years or whatever, but unless it is recognized in the formal system, you can't use it as capital uh, to get a loan on it, to start a business or things like that. Um, and it, it, it's just locked up. So uh, this book offers some solutions on how to go ahead and unlock all that capital that people have and built and actually be able to use it uh, in a capitalist economy. So you can learn about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency for free. So uh, there's a very prolific author and speaker, his name's Andreas Antonopoulos, and he uh, wrote two excellent books that are free to download. One's called Mastering Bitcoin and one's called Mastering Ethereum. These are technical books. Um, and he has uh, really good podcasts and interviews um, on, that are at his website, The Internet of Money. And right now I'm reading and listening to these two different books, The Internet of Money. They talk about how Bitcoin is just the beginning uh, and how it's different than banks and how it can be used and what you're going to be able to see in the future. So this is another thing that I recommend that you look up as follow-up information. Now, Bitcoin transactions are public, which is wonderful for what it's used for. They're not private, though. Even though you get a, a Bitcoin address and you can get many different Bitcoin addresses, um, over time, though, the activity of those addresses can be tracked. And with more advanced computing and more advanced um, studying of the Bitcoin blockchain, it's possible that in the future an address can be associated with an individual. So that's why we started Horizon uh, almost two years ago now, was to come up with a cryptocurrency that's very similar to Bitcoin and is easy to use and has the ability to do private transactions, private and anonymous transactions. And I didn't really understand what the difference between private and anonymous was, so I started this, but private is you and I are sending and receiving information and uh, we know who each other are and nobody else um, knows that, that activity is happening. Anonymous is I could be communicating with you uh, or you could be communicating with me or sending funds or things like that and we have no idea who the other person is but we're still doing it. And if you think about it, there's very few situations in life where you can send and receive messages, money um, fully anonymously. So uh, Horizon, like I said, used to be uh, Zencash, uh, and we rebranded about six months ago to a different name and a different logo, and we're all about bringing privacy to life because we think pri privacy is pretty important. I'll explain why in a little bit. And Horizon has a good heritage. So we, when we designed it and when we launched it and now that we've uh, built it, and it's still a work in progress. We, we definitely have some, some work to do still, but we, we took ideas and software code from Bitcoin. Uh, so we're going to have 21 million Zen, just like Bitcoin is going to have uh, 21 million Bitcoin. And we got our privacy technology from Zcash and the idea for an ongoing treasury where we can have funds every month to pay developers and graphics artists and all the, um, all the other functions that an organization needs from Dash. And one of the work in progress that we have is to create a distributed autonomous organization so the people who own the Zen can vote and, and determine where it goes in the future. We're also working to have faster transactions. So right now, if I sent you some Zen, you would have the ability to turn around it and send it to somebody else in about two and a half minutes. 
but with a, a DAG a directed acyclic graph instead of a blockchain, we might be able to do that a lot faster. And we're also working on side chains for smart contracts. And smart contracts would be things that are other than money uh, and distributed applications. Um, and we're going to do that through a side chain. So I'm not going to go over that too much. But we do have lots of, of uh, different partnerships uh, with some of the leading uh, organizations in the space for research, development, and software uh, development. Um, we have some uh, institutional investors that we work with, um, which is helpful when we need to take our Zen that we bring in our treasury and convert it uh, to a local currency to pay folks. Apparently not everybody accepts Zen yet as payment. Um, and then we're uh, listed on many different uh, cryptocurrency exchanges, and there's uh, some merchants that accept Zen. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot of good things in progress. Now, I did want to talk about why Horizon exists. And one of the things that I think is important, and many of us at Horizon think is important, is to have privacy in the, uh, in the parts of your life. Because if you're always worried about surveillance and other people knowing what you're doing, then in some cases, your activity might be restricted to um, just the things that you're not going to get in trouble for or get made fun of for or, or ridiculed for or arrested for. And so I figured one of the great places to start on the different rights that people have as individuals, God-given rights, is from the United States Bill of Rights, which is the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. And it talks about uh, the different freedoms that people have. And uh, specifically, one of the, the big ones, uh, protection from unreasonable searches and seizures, uh, this talks about the people's right to have privacy in the, the diaries they have, the books they read, the communications that they, they do. And unless you have the ability to actually um, do private payments and private communications, um, unless you take control of your ability to have these rights, they can slowly be eroded by other people, whether it's by governments, by large organizations uh, like Facebook and Google, uh, or by criminal organizations. So just having privacy in some of the things that you do, uh, you're able to protect what you own and what you do and what you think. And everybody wants privacy. Some people say, well, I don't have anything to worry about. I, I don't mind if anybody sees anything that I do. And I did this at, um, with, a, with a group of high school students a few weeks ago. And one girl's like, I don't have anything that's, that's private. I'm like, okay, great. Unlock your phone and hand it to me. And let me scroll through it for about five minutes. And she didn't really want that. Um, so privacy gives people the power to disclose information about themselves. So it gives you power about yourself. And one of the things that um, people really would like to have privacy about is religious freedom. Um, if they're going to contribute to a religious organization, they might not want other people to know that they're making those contributions. Uh, there's other situations where um, people like to pay privately. So think about places where you use paper money um, or instead of uh, electronic money. Um, sickness, death of a family member, um, buying things that other people might not think that you should have, whether it's a gun or if it's uh, a legal uh, drug. Well, here in America, we're going through the issue with cannabis, which helps a lot of people with diseases like epilepsy. In some, some states, uh, we have 50 states, in some states it's legal, other states it's not legal. So, um, you know, people usually pay cash because they don't they understand that any type of electronic transaction uh, is recorded by the bank and is turned over to the government and to advertising agencies and all sorts of different things uh, all the time. And certainly in businesses, if you uh, run a business or are responsible for doing a business, uh, you don't want to let your competitors know who your customers are or how, and how much they're paying you, who your suppliers are and how much you're paying them. And certainly um, it's not very good to let your employees know what everybody else makes. That just causes issues. So businesses certainly want privacy. And I believe that it's important to have a cryptocurrency that has privacy capabilities for it to really take off in the business world. Although one of the biggest applications is international remittances. So sending funds in between countries without going through banks. Um, part of the, so, so the nice books and pens that you have uh, that Sani produced locally um, 
I sent him Zen. Boom, within you know, five to 10 minutes, he's got the Zen. He can convert it to Bitcoin, uh, can convert it to Naira, and then uh, pay local vendors. And we didn't have to go through a bank to do this. We didn't have to do wire transfer. We didn't have to do Western Union. We just did it. Didn't require anybody's permission or anything else. Uh, yeah, the value of Zen goes up and down compared to, to the local currency over time. But as more and more people use it, that'll settle out. So, um, and, and if you, especially if you have private payments in doing these international remittances, um, it makes it so that uh, the folks that you're sending money to, you know, nobody locally there knows they even get it. Now, Horizon, we're all about creating privacy applications for everyday users. And here's a, a picture of our new uh, Sphere application. Uh, it's starting out with the uh, capabilities of a wallet and a messaging uh, application. So with it, you can send and receive uh, Zen. You can send and receive private Zen. Uh, you can also uh, actually communicate onto the blockchain, communicate privately with people over the blockchain. So as long as your application can access the internet and access the Zen blockchain, the Horizon blockchain, you can send private messages and anonymous messages with people. I encourage you, if you have a good internet connectivity, because to use the Lightweight capabilities, it's an easy and quick download to use the full capabilities of private messages and transactions. You'll have to download about 15 gigs of uh, information. Later on in the year, or in 2019, we're gonna update it so that you don't have to download as much to be able to do private uh, payments. But you can, you can send a Zen pri private payment today if you download the full version of the app. Um, you just get some Zen, you earn it or trade for it. Uh, you install and update the Sphere wallet, and you send it to a transparent address, and then you, uh, from that transparent address, you send it to a shielded address. So we actually have two different types of addresses and transactions in the Horizon network. We have our transparent addresses, which are just like Bitcoin, and then we have our shielded address. And when you use a shielded address, and send funds, even though it's recorded on the blockchain, when other people look at the blockchain, they can't see what address sent it, what address received it, or the amount. They can just see that there was a transaction that happened. It takes a lot of different elements of groups of people to make this work. So we work to make sure that everybody that's part of the ecosystem is gonna be successful. Uh, so that we can continue to grow and have more and more people use Horizon and have the, the benefits of the capabilities of our system. So it is a, a proof of work mining system. So there's uh, miners, uh, there are obviously direct users, uh, there's businesses that uh, would like to be able to use Horizon, so we need to integrate to them. Um, and the funds that are created every, um, every month go to the nonprofit foundation, the Zen Blockchain Foundation uh, that we turn around and hire developers with and things like that. So in fact, for uh, many cryptocurrencies, 100% of the new um, currency that's created goes to miners. And we do that a little bit differently with Horizon. 70% of the new Zen that's created goes to the miners. 10% goes to the treasury uh, that we do work with and uh, higher developers, and then 10% go to, well, 20% overall go to nodes. And nodes are important. These are computer servers that are up and running all the time. They maintain a complete copy of the blockchain. And if you're going to use a wallet application, it needs to connect to a node uh, to be able to, uh, to work. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is to get nodes operating in every country uh, and close by folks so that uh, the applications happen quickly. And if there's any kind of internet interruption, um, that your, app, your wallet application would still continue to work. And we have a lot of nodes right now. I think we're up to 25,000 nodes. You can see they're all over the world. Certainly there's a lot in uh, North America and uh, Europe. Uh, there's a lot in Asia as well, and some in Africa, and you know some in South America. Uh, so we're working on getting them extended even further because we want everybody to have a Horizon node close by them. So sometimes you might want to ask, okay, but what can I actually do with Bitcoin? What can I do with Horizon? Well, you can first off learn how to use it, learn about it more, and then 
convert some of your local currency to Zen and to Bitcoin. Because if, like I state, you know, Bitcoin is going to be money or is money and Horizon will be money and more and more people are going to use it, certainly it's, well, you would expect that as more people want something due to the law of supply and demand that uh, more people are going to want it and, and the value goes up so that you're able to have something that maintains its value over time instead of going down in value over time. So you, you exchange the money that you make for working or other things like that for uh, Bitcoin and for Horizon and then you can actually send it person to person payments. Um, if you have a wallet like the Coinomi or the Paytomat wallet, you can have a QR code on it. You can send Zen from one person to another. In fact, Sandy's going to get me a, a list of the folks uh, of you all and your Zen address. And here over the next couple days, I'll send you each a little bit of Zen so you can try this. So you can send it from one person to another and see how easy permissionless peer to peer payments are. Okay, the other things that you can do is it, it's nice to be able to um, do payments between individual people. It'd be even nicer to be able to go to a local store and buy something there. So that's where a point of sale application comes into play. So an example of a good point of sale application that accepts Horizon and Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrencies is Paytomat. And if you know anybody who's a merchant that's interested in accepting uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, you can talk to them about installing Paytomat uh, on either their mobile phone or, or on their uh, computer at their, at their shop. So um, as, you develop, as people develop uh, cryptocurrency ecosystems, they'll be able to maintain all their funds in cryptocurrency and not need to convert back to uh, local currency. Uh, at all. So um, that's my overview on cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Horizon. If you're interested in finding out more or talking to other people in the community, uh, we have a very active Discord, uh, which is a you know application used by uh, gamers and other people that want to be able to, to talk to folks all over the place. Uh, Telegram, uh, which is a good app, and we have a lot of information on our blog. And you can go to our main website and link to any of these places from our main website. And that's at www.horizon.global. Oh. So uh, any questions? Um, uh, anything I can uh, follow up on or provide information on? OK, we have, uh, we have about two persons uh, with questions. Great. We have people with questions. So they will come on board and come and ask the question. So you get set. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. That's, you got good audio. I can hear you well. All right. All right, sir. My question Hello? is... My question is, what do we gain from Horizon to currency? What do you, what, what do you get from Horizon? Yes. Uh, well, if you, if you use Horizon as a currency, uh, you get the ability to use a cryptocurrency that's fast to use. Um, and then you're also able to send private payments and messages between different people. So uh, I'll send you, uh, if you have a Horizon address on a, on a wallet application, some so that you can experiment with that. But you don't need my permission or anybody's permission to use it. All you need is an application and uh, have some, and you can send and receive it. You don't need to get a bank account. Uh, you don't need to you know, have a, you don't even need a, a cell phone number like in Pesa or something like that. Um, you can just be able to do payments. And so I think that we're going to continue to have a better and better system and product as the, as we continue to develop and improve it. So I think if you, if you do send, if I send you some Zen uh, and you're not using it for payments, hold on to it. And you, I expect over time that if there are more and more people use it, it should go up in value compared to your local currency. Thank you, sir. All right, next person. <laughs> um, how can I increase the value of my Zen? How can you increase the value yes. of cryptocurrency? Well, yes. so in the last year, well, in the last two years, uh, Bitcoin compared to a local currency like the dollar or the Naira has gone up and down a lot. Um, so 
it, I know with the US dollar. So at this time, two years ago, um, I could buy um, one Bitcoin for, I think about uh, $1,000. And then two, one year ago, a Bitcoin was about $18,000. And now a Bitcoin is down to about $4,000. So the value of Bitcoin compared to your local currency changes a lot. And that throws some people off. And some people buy it when it's expensive and then it goes down in value compared to the local currency. And they say, what can I do to get the value back up? But it's just like many other things that have supply and demand, uh, like copper or gold or oil or other things. The more people that want something, um, the, the higher the price will go. So if you want to have a cryptocurrency that you work with, whether it's Bitcoin or Horizon, and you would like to see the value go up, we know that there's only going to be a limited supply, so we have to increase the demand. We increase the demand by making a better product. So that's part of what our developers do. And we increase the demand by having more and more people use it. So if you want to have a, a, the, a cryptocurrency that you're working with increase in value, get more and more people to use it. And you can do that by showing them how to use it, by talking to them, uh, and by getting merchants to accept it. Hopefully that answers your question. Where is the headquarter of Horizon? Say that again. Where is the headquarter of Horizon? Sorry, I didn't quite understand what you're asking. Um, he wants to know the office of Horizon, where you guys, the oh. headquarters. <laughs> yeah, where we're located. So we don't actually have any office. Um, we don't have any location. Uh, it's people all around the world that work together. So I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, uh, right now, uh, my co-founder, uh, Rob, he was in Italy, but he's moving to Panama. Um, we have developers in Italy. We have uh, folks in Germany. We have uh, people in Korea and China and Japan that we work with, South America. Um, Obviously, we work with some folks right there in Nigeria with Sandy and, and, and his team. So we don't have any offices. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, is that how can I get more Z? I want to get more Z. Yeah. So, um, you can get, how do you get more Zen? Well, uh, like I said, I'm going to send you a little bit to start with, uh, just so you can see how, how it's used. And the other way to do it is because currency is transfer of wealth from one place to another, it would be useful to figure out what you have in the way of wealth, whether it's skills or um, uh, Naira or anything like that. And you can buy um, Zen or many other cryptocurrencies from an exchange. So uh, online, there's a cryptocurrency exchange and you can learn how to send and receive cryptocurrencies from that. You can also uh, go to, in many cases, there's a local Bitcoin ATM, so um, and you can go and you can go put uh, paper money into it, and you can get Bitcoin out. Then once you have Bitcoin in your wallet, you can change it over to Zen. So um, we do have a, a treasury, and in some cases we have uh, people that do proposals. Um, and if if our team accepts the proposal, we'll pay for that work in Zen. Right now, because the price of Zen is so low compared to the dollar, it's down 90% uh, from a year ago. Uh, we don't have as much uh, local currency equivalent of Zen, so we're cutting back our expenses uh, to meet uh, how much we get uh, every month. But if we, as we continue over the years, I expect that there's going to be more and more opportunity for people to earn Zen through doing the things that they're good. So. Uh, I don't know what you have as, as skills, um, but, but certainly the people that we have on team that, that do things, there's people that do translations uh, that we pay in Zen. There's people that uh, do graphics uh, art. There's um, um, you know, lots of different skills that are needed for a cryptocurrency to be adopted by users and uh, to increase its growth. So I'm sure some of the skills that you have or other people have would be of value. And if we can get into a situation where we pay you to do those things for the Horizon Project in Zen, that'd be a great thing. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
How can I become a not uh, operator? I, I heard, how can you become a, a what? A node operator. Oh, how can you become a node operator? Okay, um, that's great. So, um, so to operate a node, uh, it helps to have a little bit of technical skill. Um, and you can get instructions on how to do that. Uh, first, you go to our website, and then you sit on the place for earning Zen. Um, you can find out about super nodes and secure nodes. And from there, it'll take you to instructions on how to build one. Now, it's helpful to have a computer server that you're uh, working with. And in a lot of cases, most people use virtual private servers. So they'll, they'll rent a virtual private server. Um, and so, for, for example, you could probably rent one for US dollar equivalent of about $5 a month. And then configure that server to operate as a Zen node. Now, if you want to be paid uh, in Zen to operate that node, you have to do a couple of additional steps. The instructions are, are there. There's help on our Discord on, on how to do it. But basically, to do a secure node, you have to own 42 Zen, so 42 Zen, um, and put that in an address on a wallet and tell that node that here's the 42 Zen that I have in my, in my own wallet, and then that node registers, and then every day you get paid a little bit of Zen to operate that node. So it requires a little bit of investment of Zen. Uh, it also requires uh, to rent a VPS, a virtual private server, and then to set it up and configure it. And there's lots of people that would uh, be happy to help you through any of the tough spots on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What are the charges that is uh, attached to your customer whenever he purchases a, a product from the shop? Sorry, can you say that a little bit louder? Yeah. The charges that is uh, attached to a customer when purchasing a product from a shop, when the customer intends to pay with the whole reason coin, is there any charges that is attached to the customer? Uh, so you're talking about, you're asking about mining and hash rate uh, for the for Horizon? All right, he's, uh, Ralph, he's talking yes. about the charges, the charges of customer. Uh, once you want to send um, Horizon from your wallet, to another wallet. What are the charges? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I understand now. Um, so the charges are very small. So if I was to send you, um, so I'll, I'll probably send after this about a half Zen, right? Um, so 0.5 Zen, uh, which to, to me, that's about uh, right now, it's about $2.50. Uh, to send a half Zen, so 0.5 Zen, or even if I sent a thousand Zen, Right now, the transaction cost on the wallet is the same thing. It's 0. 0.0001 Zen. So it's pretty much free to send Zen right now. Um, as more and more people use the network, um, it might become a little bit more crowded and the transaction fees uh, would be a little bit higher. But even if you use Bitcoin as an example, there's people, you can look on the Bitcoin blockchain and see that people do this. There was somebody that sent $10 million worth of Bitcoin from one wallet to another, and it cost about 30 cents. So with Western Union or other types of commercial bank money transfer fees, the common fees are maybe 5 to 7% of the transaction. So if you send $100, it costs 5 or 6 or $7 to send it. The equivalent in cryptocurrency, because you don't have to go through a bank, you don't have to go through trusted people, um, send $100 in cryptocurrency, it costs maybe um, one cent, two cents, three cents. The fees are very, very small. That's one of the big advantages. Thank you. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have one more person. Okay. One more person before you can. Okay. Over time, I've monitored um, the cryptocurrency exchange rates. The value keep depreciating over time. Can you tell us how to invest on Horizon and make profit out of it as a student? Okay, Sandy, I need a little bit. Sorry, say say that again, please. 
that again. Okay, over time, I've monitored the cryptocurrency exchange rates. The value keep depreciating over time. Ah. Can you tell us how to invest on Horizon and make profit out of it as a student? Oh, great. Okay, so, um, yeah, the value of cryptocurrency compared to your local currency goes up and down all the time. For the last year, it's probably pretty much just gone down. So, um, I can't offer any investment advice, uh, but what I can tell you um, is there's a lot of people that are able to make money when the prices of a cryptocurrency go up and go down. So, it's very easy if you think it's going to go up, you just buy some and then you hold on to it and then the price goes up and you're like, yeah, I've got more currency and you, you can convert it back to your local currency. When it goes yeah. down, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, yeah. So. There, there's many different skill sets. One of the skill sets that, that people have is to be able to look at a graph, a, a chart of the price over time compared to a local currency and see, okay, I see that it's going up and down and I'm going to try to figure out, okay, it looks like it's at a low price. I'm going to buy some then and then maybe a few days or a week later, it's a little bit higher and you sell it. So in order to do that, you, you need to get onto a cryptocurrency exchange and be able to buy and sell different cryptocurrencies. So that's that's one way. More advanced um, trading is to actually uh, do shorting. Um, but what I tell people is if they want to buy something, in a lot of cases, uh, and it's easier to do this with Bitcoin than with Horizon right now, but right now Bitcoin is at a pretty low price, but it might go down lower. So. Uh, you have to know the few basic orders that you use on an exchange. So one of the basic orders is just, I want to buy it right now. I don't care what the price is. That's called a market order. Another order is called a limit order. And you say, well, I'm going to place an order. And then if it gets below this price, my order will execute then. And then the third type, which helps you not lose money, is called a stop loss. So for example, the lowest price Bitcoin has been in dollars recently is $3,200. So you could buy some Bitcoin now and then say, well, if Bitcoin gets down to $3,100, sell, sell all my Bitcoin and convert it to my local currency because it might be going lower. So a stop loss prevents you from losing money when you buy or sell cryptocurrency on an exchange. And if it goes up in value, then you just hold on to it. So look at technical trading, look at how to buy and sell cryptocurrencies uh, online and, and make money um, and, and do your own research on those types of things. Long, it, it depends also on what your time horizon is. So if your time horizon is, okay, I want to get some cryptocurrency and then I want it to go up in value over two or three or four years, then you just buy it and hold on to it because to, due to supply and demand, it's going to go up. But if you buy some and then it goes down in price compared to your local cryptocurrency, then you're like, oh no, I made a mistake. I lost money. What's going to happen? Is it going to go down more? Well, just hold on to it because these things change. They go up, they go down. Um, and in that case, when it goes down, you can say, hey, it's like it's on sale. It's like when you go to a store and you say, well, why? It's 70% off. I'm going to buy some more because it's on sale. So that's the way a lot of, a lot of people do it. And, and I have noticed a lot of people in the cryptocurrency industry are not very happy right now because their skills are in software development or telling other people how to use it. Their skills aren't in buying and selling, but that's okay. Um, I plan on being alive in around five or 10 or 15 years from now. So I have a little bit of horizon and I expect that it's going to be worth more when I need it five or 10 or 15 years from now. Same thing with Bitcoin. So just, you know, extend your horizon for, extend the time frame. Uh, for, for your ownership and, and value increase or decrease, and I think you're going to turn out to be okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for the lecture. I, I, as you can see, a lot of people uh, learned a lot. That's why they are able to ask uh, questions. So um, I'll see you some other time, bro. Yeah. I'll be. Uh, I'll be setting up another meetup anywhere from now, and I will let you know about the next meetup. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Sammy. Right. Have a good day. All right.